There are a couple of reasons why we stopped selling what I call recreational radios and the reason I use that term is because um, they tend to be a more affordable radio such as the Baofeng or indeed this one is the TYT UV98 which did turn out to be a better radio than the Baofeng but still it's recreational and what sets those apart from other specialist grade radios would be a couple of reasons and the first one we're going to look at here is the waterproofing which relates to the IPX rating. You can see this is the chassis and the body of uh, TYT UV98. Uh, unto themselves as a recreational radio they were fine but you can see the keypad has no waterproofing and there is no silicone gasketing around the chassis or around the control knobs and the antenna outputs on the dorsal surface of the radio. But we'll try anyway to point out uh, some feature on the circuit board that can happen with um, these radios that don't have an IPX rating and what I'm referring to is uh, you can you might be able to make out some uh, ghosting that's caused by corrosion around these uh, contact points that are on the circuit board here and typically what causes that is moisture ingress into the case of the radio and I don't mean dropping this into water uh, what I mean is you can get this as a result of carrying the radio in the pocket of a Gore-Tex jacket when it's wet outside. The humidity that builds up in the jacket transgresses through the case onto the circuit board and high humidity can cause this. Then what happens is, is the distance between these points can cause an open circuit which means then a short can arc between any of these different points and blow anything that's on the board that is susceptible to that sort of behavior such as uh, the transistors or your capacitors and those sorts of things. Now another thing that concerns me about um, these uh, more affordable or cheaper radios is the charger base because typically with those you'll see there's an AC cord that goes directly into them as opposed to say the other specialist models such as the uh, UV390 this is a charger base from it and it uses an AC to DC adapter which provides DC current directly into the charger base which is a much safer way of dealing with the current and you'll see here that there's a five millimeter gap between any potential for arcing on there this charger base from the UV390 what concerns me is indeed they have achieved the minimum five millimeter distance between those two live leads that are coming in which is considered to be the minimum amount to prevent arcing between those two points which of course would could result in a fire or a meltdown um, however the next consideration is, is this is the AC side of the circuit and this is the DC side and there should be a minimum amount of isolation between those two circuits as well and you can see here that what concerns me is the isolation between this point and that point is not all that great and how it might achieve the minimum of five millimeters but I would um, I would prefer to see something that's a little greater in terms of isolation than that um, whereas the five millimeters on this board you can see that there aren't two circuits there isn't an AC and a DC side this is all dealing with DC current throughout the whole thing which means then that we have much less chance of having 
odd arc being caused by a closed circuit and therefore this charging base is much safer and you do have the option of then going to a much safer AC adapter than these style which would be this one which I have just torn apart in order to evaluate how safe the circuit board on it is and you can see here that there's a fair degree of isolation between the AC side and the DC side of things plus a lot more happening here in terms of the circuits so um, what I recommend to clients is, is that they consider upgrading from this sort of wall wart adapter to a more heavy duty and safer uh, this one is a 5 amp model whereas these guys are typically 1 amp which means then that um, your radio could potentially charge a lot faster and in a safer manner. Now let's have a look at one of the more expensive uh, DMR radios that has an IPX rating on it and let's have a look at some of the differences. First of all let's look at the speaker. You can see how it is glued into place with a waterproof silicone material which means then that you're not going to get water ingress through the speaker portals which are open into the speaker itself and the speaker membrane is more of a rubber material that rather than paper then we move down to the um, keypad which also has that same silicone material that is cementing that keypad into place and when I press on that it doesn't fall out whereas when I press on the keypad for the 98 it just simply will fall out because you see there is no waterproof material separating that keypad so water can come in through the speaker or through the keypad but it doesn't end there then we go up to the top and if you remember on the UV 98 there was nothing sealing these possible ingress points that come in through the top of the case here they just simply slide in there and then are retained by some retainer pins or bolts on this guy you'll see there are silicone gaskets around every point of possible water ingress where it mates with the case and there is around the chassis a silicone gasket and that gasket fits into place around the chassis where it mates with the case and that's what gives this more specialist and more expensive radio its IPX rating whereas the recreational radios typically don't have any IPX rating. In the past I have sold the slightly more expensive radios in terms of being more expensive than a Baofeng such as these Anytone or Wushan radios and while they did make a little more attempt at making them water resistant such as having a silicone seal here or gasket on the edges of the chassis on the Anytone and some silicone uh, gaskets underneath the uh, dorsal surface there of the radio um, and same for the Wushan however the Wushan didn't have any gasketing around the chassis and as well on both of them nothing for the speakers and keypads so inevitably I ended up the reason that these radios are on my bench is they also came back water damaged and therefore I stopped selling them and I decided I would just stick with radios that had IPX ratings on them and even if you are a recreational user I'd recommend that you consider doing the same thing.